Today, I want to talk to you about background coding agents that you can use to connect to a repository on GitHub and have it asynchronously do a bunch of work for you um, in parallel. Now, this isn't magic. Um, it works, I would say, well where you have very focused tasks uh, that you think you can delegate to an agent in a way that are not going to conflict with a bunch of other kinds of uh, changes that you might be making to your repo. Now today, most of us act as conductors. We might be using Claude Code or Gemini CLI or Cursor or Codex, and um, we're generally focused on a single task, like steering an agent's behavior dynamically. Um, in the future, and we're already seeing this kind of play out, uh, there's this idea of engineers as orchestrators, where we might be directing a fleet of coding agents working in harmony towards shared goals or discrete goals. So this is kind of heading in that direction. I want to show you some specific tooling workflows today. Hopefully it's useful. Now there are a ton of different options that are available for this right now. Um, we've got GitHub's Copilot coding agent, which I'll be talking about today. We've got Jules, which I've talked about before. Jules is great um, for this as well. Jules is from Google. Uh, we have Codex from OpenAI. Anthropic, I've also got a Claude code uh, for web that does something similar and you can select your repo and type in a prompt to have it work there. All of these are very interesting. I've been trying them out. Now, if you're looking for the next level of these tools, things that are already thinking about how to enable you to use multiple agents across multiple tasks with an even more evolved UX, there are a number of interesting ideas here. Things like Claude Squad, which looks like this. Things like Conductor, uh, which is a desktop Mac app. All of these are sort of trying to push the boundaries of what's possible. So you can also check those out if you want. I cover all of these and more in my article, Coding for the Future Agentic World. But back to the video. Now, the one I want to talk to you about today um, is GitHub's Copilot uh, agent. So my specific use case is that I've been building out um, a Vibe coding site for beginners. Uh, there's a lot of content here, different kinds of sections, different kinds of UI, there's a lot of text. And what I wanted was to be able, you know, I was on the go, and I'm not someone that believes a lot in this idea of vibe coding from your phone. Um, you know, it sounds great in theory. I personally think it's a bit of a gimmick, but I wanted to give this a, a, a chance. And so there were a few bugs with this site on mobile, and I wanted to see if, with these focused tasks in mind, if this could actually help me out a lot. So um, the way that this worked on mobile was, you know, I went to my GitHub repository. Um, I went to new and I created a new agent task. So that will take you to uh, co-pilot agents. You then select the, the repo that you're working against. Um, and so I've got my, my vibe coding one over here. And so you can already see some of the tasks that I was working on um, over here. Now the issue that I, I wanted to kind of have it fixed, let me go into sort of a, a a slightly narrower viewport. What you'll see here is when we're on a narrow viewport, this Vibe Coding Tools section, which looks fine on desktop, but it starts to get a little bit wonky on mobile. You can see that the height of this Vibe Coding Tools area isn't quite right, the UX doesn't look quite right, and it doesn't look very professional. And so that is a, a focus section of the page I would love to get fixed up. And so I went to um, you know, the Copilot agent um, on mobile. I was using the GitHub mobile app. And I typed in this prompt. I, I kind of explained like, hey, on my home page, I have this Vibe Coding tool section. Um, I think the height might be an issue. It's causing problems with these icons. Um, maybe check if the card needs to be correct. Uh, just double check that the viewport issues are fixed because I still want this to look the same way on desktop. I just want the fix to be applied on narrow viewports. And so I gave it, you know, a little bit of specificity, not, not so much. And then I just had it go off and do its thing. Now, um, just like a cooking show, here's one we did earlier. And so um, what it did was it created this pull request right over here, fix mobile viewport height for Vibe Tools section. And it includes a summary. Um, one of the things that I liked here was that there's a concrete bullet list of the changes that have been applied. And it's even told me like exactly what steps that it took to fix the issue. So from what to what, um, how did it approach the problem? What does the rough fix actually look like? So this was great. Now here's where I actually like really um, had some respect for, for the implementation that GitHub have got. Um, the screenshots, the visual diffs are really cool. Uh, so in this case, for example, it's showing me a before and after 
the fix being made. This is a UX change, so this is exactly what I care about. And this is by default re rendered on the page. There's no interaction required to see it. So here you can see that broken behavior that I was showing you before. And then after, you can see the fix that's been applied. So I can see that it, it has changed um, how that looks. The, the minimum height appears to have been changed to accommodate the look. And it's not just showing me the before and after, but it kind of got this vibe, right, that I cared about the desktop experience not being changed. So it's also got a desktop screenshot in here as well. This is awesome. This is really awesome. This is giving me confidence that I could get um, a lot of value out of this tool. Now, um, what I want to show you next is uh, this. So uh, there was another change that I wanted to apply. And I'll just try to see if I can show you the, the issue that I was running into. So on desktop, this is a long page, as I said. On desktop, if you scroll down, you will notice this little like blue and green progress bar. I can maybe zoom in to, to see if you can see it. So it's that blue and green progress bar under the black. And as we scroll through the page, you know, we get closer and closer to the end. Um, now this looks fine on desktop. On mobile, I actually hide that navigation bar just because, um, you know, I, I think scrolling is fine. It's a little, it, feel, it can feel a little faster on mobile. Lots of people might have opinions on this. But um, I end up hiding that. And so if you scroll down the page, you'll notice that that scroll bar, you know, that, that not, not that scroll bar, but the progress bar is still visible there. And that's not great. That doesn't look very good. It looks a little bit weird. And so I'd maybe like to hide that just on um, mobile, but keep the experience on desktop. And so uh, we can actually go back uh, to Copilot Agents. And I had given it a description um, of this problem. One of the nice things is at the bottom um, of these, it always includes the original prompt, which is awesome. So you can see exactly what you'd asked it about. And here I can see that, you know, it figured that the scroll progress bar renders on mobile design, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it explains the change that it made just as we saw before. I can see that it's got a mobile specific fix here for narrow, you know, for, for those viewports. And um, it's showing me like the desktop and mobile view. This is less useful to me right now just because you, it requires a scroll, right, to be able to go and see what's up. But I have Netlify hooked up. You know, you'll, you'll be using Netlify or Vercel or something like this for your deploy previews. And if I go to the preview and I go, you know, um, in, in, into DevTools, you'll see that that progress bar is no longer um, being shown. But on desktop, it's working perfectly. So those are exactly the changes that I want made. Um, and this was actually really reliable for those use cases. So I'm now going to throw a slightly more complicated task at the agent. Um, so we have this Vibe Coding Tools section on, you know, the home page, and uh, it has this, this very subtle, simple effect on it. But I know that there are a lot of CSS experts out there that can do so many more interesting things than this. Um, one of my favorite CSS experts uh, is, is Jay, uh, who, who maybe um, some people follow. But um, I came across this nice effect that he has on buttons. And I don't, I don't know if this is the right effect for this case, but I'm interested in whether we can get this working. Um, without me having to kind of code any of it myself. So what I'm doing is uh, Jay's got a snippet here, and he links out to a code pen um, for this effect. So I'm just going to copy in some of this as context uh, into uh, the agent. And I'm just saying, can you update the Vibe Coding Tools icon so that we use the below inspired effect? Now, just from a UX perspective, I would have liked if this made it a bit easier to add in additional context, whether it is files or code samples or anything like that, or, or images. Like images would be great. I'd love to be able to include a screenshot of this. It doesn't seem to right now, unless I'm doing something wrong. But we're still going to run with this and see if it's able to get this implemented. So let's see what happens. OK, so I came back a few minutes later. And here's the pull request that was generated. Um, I could have multiple pull requests for different features, by the way. Like this is what I mean about this idea of kind of orchestrating um, agents to work on multiple tasks. But uh, here's what it came up with. It looks like it studied the pattern. Um, and it came up with a linear gradient implementation with conic gradients that could do something very similar. Now, remember that the original implementation did not use these like um, these tiles with an image in the middle. There, it was kind of a button. So I'm very curious how it's decided to implement it. And so the screenshot here looks like it's doing something um, with the background to these icons, which is kind of interesting. Some of these icons are SVGs where logos were available, and some of them are PNGs. But I am very interested to try this out. So we've got a deploy preview here. Let's go see what the effect looks like.
Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. You know, I feel this is actually a faithful implementation. Um, and I especially like it when we've got C uh, SVG icons here. That looks kind of cool. I actually think I'm going to land this change. Um, I like it. If, uh, if this was a button and we had like button content, it would totally make sense that this is just the border. But I really like the interpretation that it's gone with here. So I'm going to land this change. Good job, Copilot agent. Um, I'm sure there are going to be more complex places where, you know, maybe it's not so good. But I just wanted to show you guys this. But I just wanted to say, I think there is something here, and this is worth experimenting with. As I said before, it remains very important whenever you're using these background coding agents or any AI for coding to actually take a look at the code that is being generated. What are the changes? How many files is it applying these changes to? How does it fit into the rest of the app? As long as you're keeping that human in the loop, I think that these tools are potentially worth trying out. So I hope that's useful. Cheers.